Try to get these phones lined up as best I can. This is not my most professional operation here, but it will get the job done. So <clears throat> we are going to go live here. We're going to do it on TikTok. We're going to crush it. And we are going to talk about this week's nature unit study, which I was very excited to put out. We are continuing our study into food preservation, which is a real fun topic for me. And there's so many cool activities we can do with it. And as you know, I always talk about the best education is in context and hands-on because you're learning through seeing, you're learning through hearing, you're learning through touch, your tactile um, mind. And if you combine all those things and you differentiate the instruction, it is very powerful and has a lasting impact in terms of what your child will remember because they could always reference back to, hey, I remember when we did whatever it is that we did. So without further ado, let's grab TikTok and let's get this party started. Three, two, one. Good afternoon, TikTok. I am here on vacation in Florida and it is an absolutely beautiful day. And today we are going to talk about an education in survival, which is one of my favorite topics, and it's something we've really been working on all year. And one of the many one of the many flaws of the public school system is it doesn't do much in terms of teaching children real world skills. So the question is, how do we, as the parents, step in and fill that gap and teach our children? the skills that we want them to learn. And for myself and the members of my community, we've been doing that all year through our nature unit study. And it's essentially using gardening, using nature to teach children real skills that they could benefit from throughout the course of their life and then using those skills to get them entrepreneurial experience. So. This week, we continued our study into food preservation. You can probably hear the rain behind me. Um, we continued our study into food preservation, which is a really cool topic. And we are learning about vacuum sealing food to make it last longer. Now, for anyone that hasn't vacuum sealed food, it'll last about three to five times longer than typical if you suck the oxygen out of it. And the reason for that is bacteria just like anything else that's living, requires oxygen to live. So if you create an oxygen-free environment, a vacuum, right? Nature of hers a vacuum, then the bacteria can't grow and you extend the shelf life of your food. So as I always say, you want your children to learn hands-on, you want them to learn in context. So what we do is we actually have the students do hands-on activities. And this week, what our children were doing and what your children could do is to take a Ziploc bag, ideally a freezer bag, put chicken in it. It could be chicken breast. It could be um, dried out grains, beans, vegetables, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Put it in the bag, have your children seal the bag, but leave about a finger's width opening right in the corner, push all the air out of the bag, and then take the bag and submerge it in a bowl of water, leaving just the top of the Ziploc bag above the water. And then what happens is the density, right? The, um, the air is less dense than the water. So the water around the bag converges in, pushes the air up, the air leaves the bag, creating a vacuum-like effect. And then you have your child seal the bag. And depending on, ooh, we're dropping phones. And then depending on whatever it is that they vacuum sealed or water sealed, um, they do it in storage. So if it was chicken breast, they might want to put that in the fridge. They might want to put that in the freezer. If it's dried out beans, they might want to put that in the pantry. And then as you're doing that, you're teaching them about food preservation and why it works, right? You're teaching them how the vacuum that you've created 
starves the bacteria. It denies them oxygen so that bacteria can't reproduce, they can't grow, and the food lasts longer. It's the same thing where last week we had our students make beef jerky and learn about smoking. And when you smoke food to preserve it, you're working on that very same principle in which smoke has antibacterial properties. And when you smoke meat, it actually um, kills off all the bacteria and it prevents it from turning rancid and going bad, right? So these are different methods of food preservation. Next week, we're going to do pickling, but it really comes down to teaching your children in context through hands-on learning. Because all of us are, every single person you will ever meet learns a little bit better when they do something, which is why you can go to college and you can graduate with a degree, but you're not nearly as valuable as someone who has two years experience doing what you studied. Hands-on learning, in-context learning is the best way to learn. And you compare that to what happens in the public school system where everything's out of context. Children are going from class to class in 45 minute blocks. They're doing whatever the teacher tells them to do. The assignment doesn't have any real meaning to them. So at the end of 45 minutes, they take the piece of paper, they crumple it up and they throw it out. And, um, you know, that's not how we want our children to learn. We want our children to learn through doing. And, you know, whether we're doing science, whether we're doing history, it doesn't matter. The more hands-on your children could be, the better. So that's really what I wanted to cover today. Um, I didn't have too much planned, but I, th I was pretty excited about the nature unit study this week. And then that the other thing that we're doing through the nature unit study is uh, we're continuing our study into bugs and how to combat the bugs that we don't want in our garden. So uh, earlier this year, our students learned about, you know, quote unquote, bad garden bugs and good garden bugs and how aphids are one of the bugs that really could, you know, ruin your garden. They could ruin your spring or fall season. And what we did earlier in the year is we had the students actually make ladybug feeders and then the ladybug feeders draw in the ladybugs and the ladybugs eat the aphids. Well, there are other methods of getting rid of aphids as well. And one of those is to make an organic at-home bug deterrent or aphid killer, right? And all you do is um, you need water. You fill up a spray bottle. You put two teaspoons of dish soap into the mixture, organic dish soap, and then you put about 10 to 20 drops of peppermint, and then you spray that on your plants, right? You have your children spray it on the plants, and that will get rid of the aphids, and it will deter new aphids from coming. And then what you want to teach them is that you want them to spray the plants at sundown. And the reason for that is because you're dealing with oils. If you spray early in the day, it could actually, on a hot enough day, could cook your leaves, which you don't want. So you, sh you have your children spray the plants um, at sundown, and then the next day in the morning before the sun comes back up, water the plants, get those oils off. This way your plant doesn't cook. But again, it falls right in line with everything we do, everything we teach, everything we preach. Hands-on learning is the way. How often do you keep spraying? Um, if I was having a problem with the bugs, I would do that every evening. So I would just spray the plant at, even, um, at sundown, you know, get it, get all the leaves, get the stems, get it pretty thoroughly, the whole area. And then when you wake up in the morning, just wash that off with water. And um, this way your plant doesn't cook in the sun. So I'm going to go back and answer some questions. And then I'm just going to, just going to shoot the shit with you guys because I, uh, I got out of my flow. I haven't been live streaming, but we've been so busy in Florida. It's been really nice, actually. Um, we spent a few days with my sister at my sister's house, and I was with my nieces, who I, I basically lived with them, you know, down a couple blocks away when we were in New York. So it's like kind of upsetting not to see my nieces for a full year 
that's hanging out with my nieces and running around and having fun. And, ooh, Thor is here. You know, running around and having fun and um, hanging out with my sister and catching up and doing that all while working. So, eat any alligator yet? I saw an alligator, which was pretty cool. Um, I'm at, right now, we are at my brother-in-law's, I'm sorry, not my brother-in-law's, we are at my father-in-law's house. So they're in an HOA and they have one of those community pools. So we're out at the community pool and then behind the community pool, they have a lake and in the lake there's alligators. So I was just watching and I, I got to see a couple alligators, which was pretty cool. I actually, in North Carolina, um, someone who lives right across the street from my homestead and they have a pretty big property themselves, like five acres of land. When you go back five acres, they're right on the bay and they have a dock out on the bay. And I was sitting out on the dock and I actually watched an alligator eat something, hunt and eat something, which was pretty wild. And then I was looking around me like, oh, yeah, guy was pretty stealthy and ferocious. So, you know, all of that. All right, so let's see. It is good to be back. Melissa's in the house. Gunter's in the house. Thank you for your content. Yeah, well, I, you know, just because I'm on vacation, really the only thing I've been on vacation from is the live streaming. And I've tried to really make it so that uh, I, the ch I don't hold up Nicole and the children from doing what they want to do. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of my work, as you guys have seen, I never stop. So... I have a responsibility as the head of our community to make sure that I'm providing you guys with the materials that you need to thrive as homeschool parents. So we've been doing some really cool stuff. Like, you know what I'm really excited about, which I'm hoping you guys like is, Oh, someone wrote a comment about it today, actually about, I just started a new series on the logical fallacies this week. And the first fallacy that I did was the straw man fallacy, which for any of you not familiar with the logical fallacies, they are just um, common flawed arguments that people make and you should look out for. So if someone makes a straw man argument, it goes something like this. I'll be like, I'm like, the sky is really dark and gloomy right now. You guys hear that thunder? And then you would come in and be like, wow, Brett always has such a pessimistic worldview. He's always saying the sky is so dark and gloomy. And I'm like, no, that's not what I meant. I was talking about the sky right now. It was like, yeah, right now, in the past, in the future. Every time this guy speaks, it's just the sky is dark and gloomy, right? It's a straw man argument. You're taking someone's argument. You are modifying it to be something that it's not. And then attacking them on an argument they never really made. This is a logical fallacy. This is something you want your children to be aware of. I'm being rained on in here. This is something you want your children to be aware of when they listen to, you know, these full of, you know, what politicians or when they turn on the television and they listen to the news or whatever it might be. These are the type of arguments that you'll hear every day. So you want to teach your children these fallacies, these fallacies, um, so one of the assignments that I had the children do, it's really a parent-child activity, is to play a game where one person makes a statement and then you go back and forth, basically straw manning one another. So no matter what the person says, you take what they say out of context and then you debunk what they said, but they didn't really say it. Um, so someone got back to me today and they were like, wow, I had so much fun playing the straw man game. And uh, yeah, that's what like, that's what I was going for. Cause if you do it right, it's really funny because no matter what the person says, you just take them out of context and it's a great way to learn about straw men. And then the second man, Florida's angry. Damn. Hold on one second. little bit better. <laughs> a 
Welcome to my humble abode. Hi, Orbs. How's my little girl? Daddy be down a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you. Orb is standing at the, at the door. Let me out there. All right. All right, let's see. <laughs> Wait, that's where I'm moving to. Yes, with the gators. Yes, correct. There are gators, Melissa. And, and that will make you stronger. By the way, I'm very excited about that. Can I be an affiliate for your books? Right now, you can't be, although I am currently in conversation with people that I respect and I am possibly going to get a... Um, a new publisher, and if that's the case, I should be able to have affiliates on the books. That's how we get rid of meat scraps in Central America. Toss the carcasses into the gators, yep. Really trying to get into homeschooling. You've come to the right place. Um, if, if you want to get started, go to hslda.org, and they have the paperwork you need. You guys hear that sky? So anyway, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been here on vacation and I like a little lizard. Florida is some place. It is, uh, you get all type and like all types of people. It is quite something here in Florida. But yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to do a quick stream. I didn't really have too much planned, but, um, I miss talking to you, the people. And when I get back to Carolina next week, I'll get back to my regular schedule, so. They sent all the CIA bugs to North Carolina, so now they're getting you with the what? Yeah, well, after the latest prank by Gavin McGinnis, I, I, you know, I'm not so sure if it's the CIA sending these assassin bugs after me. There's one coming at me right now. Hey, Aubrey. Um, I'm not so certain if it's the CIA. I don't know. It might be Mossad. It might be MI6. It might be some type of a transnational corporation, possibly funded by the bankers or George Soros. So I've learned that one of the mistakes that I've been making is I'm too quick to blame the CIA and the FBI, where there are plenty of other groups that could be responsible for these things. Like, Gavin McGinnis, for example, I don't know if you guys saw what he did. You know, this is supposedly this respected white, uh, this respected right wing figure, Gavin McGinnis, right? And I've always kind of viewed the guy as a clown because he had his, uh, got to talk around this. He had his oh so very proud group of boys, right? Running around and getting in fist fights with Antifa. And you know, I always looked at that and said, wow, you know, if I were the people in control and I was trying to control the narrative in society, what I would really want is a group of idiots that go and get into fights with Antifa because then I could point out how um, aggressive that group, that ideology is, right? So like that was always his thing and he got his people arrested Gavin McGinnis got his people arrested and whatnot. And then he comes out uh, two weeks ago in the midst of everything going on with mar lago and whatnot. And Gavin McGinnis claims, well, he doesn't make a claim, but a rumor starts that he was um, arrested by the FBI. And as it turns out, he wasn't arrested. As it turns out, as I predicted with his, oh, group, his group of proud boys, is that he was actually a right-wing grifter, that he was not raided by the FBI, that he made it up because he wanted people to send him Babylonian magic squares, also known as dollars. So I, I found that interesting. 
But so, so much of what goes on around us is controlled opposition. By the way, it is raining like crazy here. So many of these people we see are controlled opposition and it really reaffirms everything we talk about, how we have to teach our children to identify propaganda. We have to teach our children to use their discernment. And more than anything else, we have to teach our children. Do you guys hear that rain? We have to teach our children not to have false idols. Idol worship, I really think idol worship might be the worst sin. Like, I know you guys respect me. Never, ever make me into an idol. Ever. Ever. Idol worship is so bad. Like, so many people who consider themselves patriots and whatnot, like, and look up to Gavin McGinnis, right? And that's the guy leading them. And then where... Where is he funded from? Like, where does his funding come from? I would guess it is a country in the Middle East. I'll let you figure out which one, because if you talk about these countries, they call you names and, and don't let you speak anymore. Yeah, idol, idol worship is the worst. You see it, I mean, you see it with Hollywood and how they use Tom Hanks to roll out the last agenda, how during that event in Texas, they rolled out Matthew McConaughey, right? And people think, people admire these celebrities, the beautiful people, and they think they're being real, but they don't realize that they're paid puppets. So... You'll have Matthew McConaughey come out and right after a tragic event and he'll give a speech how he's all for the Second Amendment. I'm all for the Second Amendment, but, but, so no, you're not all for the Second Amendment. You are a paid shill who sold your soul to the devil and people look up to, you know, the McConaughey types and that could be a big, big problem. So we have to make sure that we teach our children not to worship false idols, that they could like LeBron James, but understand that LeBron James sold his soul to Nike. That LeBron James liked to talk about oppression until, you know, it gets to the Far East and what's happening with those Nike shoes and what's happening with that little country in the Far East, right? And then he doesn't like to talk about oppression so much, right? Because these guys are full of you-know-what. By the way, could we talk about, could we talk about how ridiculous all these people are with the Queen of England? I made a post which, okay, mind you, I did get the ancestral lineage wrong of Queen Elizabeth, but that's neither here nor there. I made a post about the royal family of England, and the stuff that I definitely didn't get wrong is the connections to um, that guy who had the secret blackmail island, you know, the guy that didn't kill himself, and the royal family's connection to that guy, or how the royal family had knighted Jimmy Savile, who Jimmy Savile, for those of you that don't know, literally was a serial, not just child, you know whatist, you know what a file, but literally with dead bodies, like the darkest human being on the planet. And he was knighted by the royal family. Um, there were BBC specials, how he was the only guy in England who didn't have to knock on the door of Buckingham Palace, how he could just walk in. Like, really grotesque, grotesque stuff. Um, the royal family, for those of you, like, if you look into it, 
They are the direct descendants of Vlad the Impaler. For those of you not familiar with Vlad the Impaler, he was a direct... Vlad the Impaler is the real-life man that Dracula is based off of, right? And he was a cannibal, right? And their family admits to, within the last couple of hundred of years, being cannibals, right? And, you know, now they don't admit it, but I'm sure, you know. And, um, and it's like you post that and the vitriol I get from people like, how dare you? How dare you talk about the royal family that way? Who do you think you are, sir? How I was with you. How dare you talk about Queen Elizabeth? And I was like, these people claim the divine right of kings. Like, they claim that their authority comes from, and that's why they can rule. And they get $150 million of taxpayer money a year. They live in castles, and then you'll turn on the television and they'll be like, They'll get the propaganda agents out there and they'll be like, Queen Elizabeth, so beautiful. She lived a life of service. I was like, oh yeah, she gets $150 million of taxpayer money a year, lives in six castles, and you think she lived a life of service? <laughs> yeah, she was serving you all right. She could literally, and now uh, King whatever his name is, King Douche, could literally walk into Canada and shut down their country. He could shut down their government. And then of course, all of the colonialism, the imperialism, all of that stuff, the you know whatery that everyone's so sad about, like they still, everyone's so triggered, like, oh my God, in 1860, yeah, well, whose family do you think was responsible for all this stuff? And don't even get me started that the Windsors were these people, by the way. Come on, towel. My last line of defense, man. Towel is my last line of defense against the elements. But yeah, I got so much hatred on the, on the royal family post. And it's like, you people are just... Like, all right, I understand, I can relate to why, why these psychopaths think they need to control the population. Like, I wouldn't do it. Like, I, I, I'm, God is my master. Jesus is my master, right? So, I follow Jesus, but I can see why these Satanist psychopaths who have all the money and power... I can see why they think what they think. Like, they know what the royal family is. Like, they know what that family really is and what they represent. And they just see all of these people crying in the streets, worshiping them. And they're like, man, it's like almost like these people deserve what they're getting. So it's, I mean, I get it. I can see why they do it. Like, these people act like sheep. They take no personal responsibility. There's, like, little discernment, no critical thinking. And you're like... Yeah, I can see why these billionaire ancient families think they, you know, they have a divine right of kings. It's like, man, where is the thought? Where is the, the free mind? There are too many people everywhere. Now, that's the thing, though. The, the, the truth of the matter is you've been told that your whole life, but the truth of the matter is there is abundance. There is an abundance of resources um, in the world. And you could, there is so much land that you can literally house every person in the world in Texas, in just Texas. That's how much land there is. And you are not... You are not 
a curse to this world, you are a gift to this world. You are supposed to take care of it. You are supposed to garden and grow trees and take care of the animals. And um, unfortunately, so much of, of humanity has gone down a kind of a satanic road that people just don't do that. And like what you're going to see is like, they're like, they've been so successful at doing what they're doing. The problem isn't population... The, the, pop, the problem is the collapse that's about to happen, right? Yeah, one-fourth an acre for every person on Earth just in Texas. So what you're going to see in the next 50 years is you are going to see a population, like, domino, like you've never, like you can't even imagine. And the reason for that is um, a variety of reasons, but none larger than the birth over replacement rate. If you just look at the birth over replacement rate, for every two people, there has to be at least 2.1 children being born. So for every mother and father, if you're replacing yourself, there has to be on average over 2.1 people or your society will collapse. Well, you go look up those numbers in every country in the world and then you'll understand like, oh, this is why they're trying so hard among other reasons to open up borders and bring people in from the quote unquote, the third world. They need labor. You know, people are like, I'm so mad my country's being taken over. Well, are you willing to do the labor? Did you have children that can do the labor? No, no. Well, who's gonna do the labor? They have to bring people in. People have been beat down. This hurt my back being here. People have been beat down by their own sin. And because of that, they, they are being replaced, but we don't have to be. We can, we can multiply. We can have lots of children. We can homeschool our children and raise them. Right. And when everything falls apart, I picked up the phone. When everything falls apart, if you live a moral life, it will be you who's in the position of strength. Like, man, it is coming down hard here. Like, think about, think about what I've done, right? Like, as the system's collapsing, right, you have everyone pulling their children out of school, everyone getting fed up, fed up with the school system, and as that's been happening, I've just been slowly but surely, like the turtle, winning the race, slowly but surely building out curriculum, slowly but surely putting together lesson plans and unit studies, and when the system collapses, I'm going to find myself in a very strong position because I'm moral, because I follow God, and because um, I don't fall for their spells, their magician spells. So every one of you can do that. Like Gunter, you could start a tool manufacturing business right now. Gunter's Custom Tools. And in a few years... When the system collapses and supply chains go down again, you could literally be the new Ryobi. Like, don't think you can't do that. You just start small, don't take the loans, don't take the debt, and when the time is right, it'll be your time. And you just build and build and build and be ready, and every single one of us can do that. Everyone's like, everyone's like, food shortages, food shortages. Hold on one second. Everyone's like, food shortages, oh no. It's like, all right, so start growing your own food. And then if the food supply breaks down, you know how valuable your cucumbers just became? You know how valuable your tomatoes just became? Like, you'll get rich just growing food. So build, build, build. Never let them get you in a state of despair. Never let them convince you that there's too many of you. There might be too many of the douchebag down the block, but there's not enough of you. You need to be fruitful and multiply. You need to have lots of children. You need to be a great husband. You need to be a great wife. You need to get out of your life. Films that makes you weak, that makes you pathetic. It zaps your strength. It turns you into a cuck. It severs your connection. You're pair bonding with your wife, which harms your children. Find your strength and build and live a moral life. And there is no limit to the things 
that you are capable of doing. These are love bugs. These are the most annoying bugs on the planet. Little love bugs. And that's what's up, people. And that's what we're teaching our children. For anyone that's new here, um, we do hands-on learning, hands-on lessons. We teach our children to be moral. We teach them to use their discernment. We teach them to be critical thinkers. We teach them through our example, right? I haven't drinking alcohol in nearly three years. Not because I don't like drinking, not because I don't get the itch to drink sometimes. Like sometimes I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, it would feel great to just sit back and throw down. But you know what happened the other day? And uh, I was talking about drinking and well, here's what happened. When we were in Jacksonville, which can I tell you something? Every city that I have been to now, and I, I grew up around a big city in New York, every city that I go to is an absolute shithole. Shithole. Like, there were literally, in Jacksonville, crack houses everywhere. There were crackheads walking on the street like zombies. I've, I, I grew up in New York, and I've never seen anything like it. And so we were stopped at a red light, and some bum, some drunk, cracked-out bum, starts screaming at me from outside the car to give him money. Um, and my children are in the car. And as I told Nicole, and I'm thanking God didn't put me in this situation. If he got more aggressive, I wasn't going to get that. Um, so I'm thankful that I didn't, it didn't come to that. Because I wasn't going to get out and have a fist fight with uh, herpes hepatitis infested bum. I'm not dumb. So, so I had to explain to Brady, I was like, well, some people make bad decisions in life and they drink a lot of alcohol and it puts them on a bad path. And Brady was like, oh, so that's why you don't drink alcohol? And I'm like, yes. And that was a great moment for me because for the last three years, I committed to doing that and my son actually got to see, um, got to see that and he learned from that. Our children learn more from what we do than what we say, right? They learn from what we do. So we need to do things the right way. What grade do you start? Well, you start homeschooling as soon as your children are born. So Early in life, you want to have a language-rich environment where you're talking, everything's in context, like, Daddy's holding the phone. Look, the phone is in my hand. I'm holding the phone in my hand. Now the phone is close to my face, right? And then as they get older, you kind of want to set up the area Montessori style so that everything around them is educational. And then you could get into the more formal stuff when they're like four years old. It's not fun being rained on. Must be nice to not be rained on. That's better. Ah, oh, I feel like this is kind of comfy, cozy though. Like I hear the rain around me. It's like a very intimate setting. Like I should really, I should drop my voice. I just can't hear it over the rain, but I'm glad you joined me here on this stream and my beautiful humble abode where I sit in this egg chair and talk to you about personal responsibility and educate our children right so that they will not be fooled by the propaganda and follow Kevin McGinnis and give him money as he fakes FBI raids so that he can take a victim status like the pathetic loser that he is. Can DeSantis fix? Well, DeSantis, here's what I'll say. He has done some good things. 
right? He was probably the least or one of the least restrictive governors in the country, which speaks a lot. My concern with DeSantis is he is funded mostly by a country in the Middle East that if you criticize at all, you're not allowed to talk on social media, but he's funded by that country. So can a guy really be America first if that's where his funding is coming from? And to me, the answer is no. To me, these politicians are all like Trump, like he, he ran on America first, right? That was the America first guy. What did Trump become? I watched Trump sit by during the largest, most effective communist takeover in the history of America. Ah, oh, my towel goes down. It's the CIA. Now it's Mossad. Hold on. Hold on, hold that thought, people. Party people in the rain tonight. Everybody's gonna have a good time. Classical learner make you lose your mind. Classical learner make you lose your mind. All right. Okay. Is that better? Is that better? So, yeah, so we watched Trump and he oversaw the most effective government takeover in the history of America and not even close, like not even close. And you would say, oh, but Brett, don't you know his hands were tied? He, he couldn't control these governors. No. The governors could only get away with what the people sent to. So if 45 came out in March of 2020, or even if he fell for it a little bit, but if he came out in August of 2020 and said, this is a globalist takeover of our country, do not comply. That's all he had to do, one speech. Do not shut down your businesses, do not comply. The entire thing would have ended, not just in the United States of America, but literally in the world. That's the following he had. That's, um, that's how much his base trusted him. He kind of like, he made himself into a false idol, a godlike figure, right? And literally all he had to do was say, do not comply. And the entire thing was over. All of the, the stores not letting you in, everything. It would have been an overwhelming amount of people. When 50% of the population does not comply, they did not have the enforcement power to do anything. Not a damn thing. That's all he had to do, but he didn't do it. And then I say, okay, well, he didn't do that. You know, but maybe I get it because if he did that, you know, he was trying to win re-election. And if he did that, the news every night would have reported of more people. Um, every, every, every day they would have reported this person died, that person died, and they would have counted them and called them Trump deaths. Okay, so he was just trying to win election. But then I'm like, wait a second. He took a million dollars from one of the companies that rhymes with Mackenheiser. He took a million dollars from them and then he backed everything they wanted to do. And then after he lost the election, he went on to become still to this day, unapologetically a complete backer of everything that happened since March of 2020, including that product which in my mind makes him responsible for the you know what of a lot of people. Responsible for the you know what of a lot of people. So what do I think of him? I don't think much of him. And then I see, oh, well, this whole time, Mr. America First, again, where was he funded from? Same place as DeSantis. So no, I don't think a candidate that receives funding from a foreign country could be America first. I don't see it.
I want to know if you've ever seen the rain. Yep, that's the country. You can't talk about that on social media otherwise, you know, because they're so not powerful that if you talk about it. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Everybody's going to have a good time. Classical learner make you lose your mind. I mean both. It's the foreign country and it's their pack. Yeah, just because they label someone a term, that's like, here's what they do. They commit crimes, and then they label anyone who calls out the crimes a term. <laughs> and they use that to silence people. Like, it's just the mob. Like, it's, it's not actual. Like, anyone who thinks it's hatred is just, you have, you're so brainwashed. Yeah, it's just madness. It's just madness. Anyway, it's not my role to talk about all that. It's my role to educate the next generation so that they just know it inherently. <laughs> so anyway, I think I'm going to call the stream on that. So I'm going to go. Um, I'll be back maybe tomorrow, but I'm traveling tonight, so I'll let you guys know. But uh, anyone interested in what we do, you can find it at www.classicallearner.com, Homeschools Connected, and it is $10 a month with the discount code FREEDOM, all lowercase. And um, freedom isn't free. You've got to earn it every day, and I will undoubtedly be back to earn it. I'm going to fake drink something for Melissa. I want to know if you've ever seen the rain. 